Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jada and this is Jada Solo Dances. I'm here to teach you how to break out of your comfort zone by becoming an adult skater. As you may have noticed by my recent update video or any of the descriptions of my recent videos, I started using they, she pronouns. I actually started using she, they pronouns last year in January, but a lot of things have happened and well, yeah. You may call this being non-binary or gender non-conforming or whatever, but I like the sound of binary rejector instead and that's just because I'm extra. Whatever you want to call it, more and more folks are coming out as non-binary and trans even in the sport of figure skating. Timothy LaDuc and Elliot Halverson are two people that come to mind when I think about folks who are non-binary in the figure skating space. Um, but I had a camper last year at my summer camp who was 12 and already using they them pronouns. So it really is kind of spreading in the sport, whether we like it or not. Because not everybody's familiar with these terms, let's go over a few. Gender identity is one's internal sense of being male, female, neither, both, or other genders. Gender expression is the physical manifestation of someone's gender identity through their clothing, hairstyle, voice, body shape, or other things, and these are typically referred to as masculine or feminine. Your sex assigned at birth is the assignment and classification of people as male, female, intersex, or another sex. Those who are cisgender are those who identify with their assigned sex at birth, meaning if you were born a female and you identify as a female, you would be a cisgender female. And the term transgender is encompassing of many gender identities for those who do not identify or exclusively identify with their sex assigned at birth. With this wave of people finding their identities, some industries are slow to change, figure skating included. But before I get ahead of myself, let's define what non-binary actually means. According to the LGBT Foundation, non-binary is used to describe people who feel their gender cannot be defined within the margins of gender binary. Instead, they understand their gender in a way that goes beyond simply identifying as either a man or woman. Some non-binary people may feel comfortable within trans communities and find this as a safe space to be with others who don't identify as cis, but this isn't always the case. Non-binary people may use a combination of pronouns, including he, him, his, she, her, hers, they, them, theirs, he, they, she, they, or neo-pronouns like z, zim, zir. The current estimate of non-binary individuals in the U.S. is 1.2 million adults found in a study by UCLA, but that number is actually probably higher when you consider sample bias, and I'm not actually sure about the teen or youth percentage, but maybe there is a statistic from the Trevor Project. As for me, even as early as six or seven years ago, I knew that there was something different about me when I compared myself to other people who look like me. I watched a lot of my friends from high school and college come out as trans and non-binary, but that never felt like the right term for me. I didn't have dysphoria. Um, I enjoy being moderately feminine, and I knew that the way that I identified had no bearing on how I carried myself through life. I could do what I want and still call myself a cisgender female. Well, that's what I thought. Um, at some point in the last couple years, as life as we know it has been flipped upside down, COVID, I decided actually, yes. Yes, um, how I identify has a lot to do with how I carry myself and how it becomes a faulty shortcut for people to assume things about me. I used to think that as long as you carried out your own beliefs or disbeliefs in my case about gender norms, it didn't really matter uh, what other people thought about you. We're all socialized into meeting the lockstep of what society tells us is typical for people with your genitalia and appearance but you can deviate and still be a girl, boy. It's just a label, right? <laughs> Except as I started meeting new people in grad school and in the figure skating world, something just felt off. As people started listing things that were typically associated with girls or boys, my brain imploded. People talked about things that were typical of boys and girls or men and women. I could no longer conceptualize gender without the nagging thought that we're just all raised into these columns. Girls are more domestic. Guys are rough. Girls wear white skates and dresses. Guys wear black skates and really boring costumes. Girls have better spirals. Boys have better jumps. What are we talking about? 
we literally made all of this up. It's pretty much all made up. Men used to wear white boots all the time. And most of skating that we're good at as figure skaters is because that's all we practice. There is some argument to be made about sex hormones impacting elasticity in joints and energy in muscles, but I can't stress the fact enough that a lot of what we do in the sport separated by gender is pretty much just made up. All right, so how does this affect non-binary people in the sport? Great question, I'd love to tell you. First things first, there is literally no way to be non-binary in US figure skating. You have to choose. Even if you compete a co-ed event, even if you only ever test moves in the field or freestyle, and even the way that we're trained to announce at competitions is flip-flopping between something like competing on behalf of XYZ Skating Club, please welcome XYZ. And the alternative is she or he represents the XYZ Skating Club, yada, yada, yada. And that's just supposed to be okay. We're supposed to look at someone or look at their event and go, yes, that is what you are. And for the most part, I guess that's how the world has worked up until this point. Post-colonialism, post-imperialism. But we have no infrastructure for the way that the world is changing or healing, if I'm being honest, since gender norms are largely imported, much like sugar, rice, and tobacco, if you catch my drift. I just don't know that we're doing this DEI thing in a way that is meaningful. They're trying, but only kind of. The largest federations are trying, but only kind of. <laughs> I have a feeling that this sport, and a lot of sports, are simply stuck on autopilot when it comes to segregation by gender. We have somehow entrenched every facet of gender normativity into this freaking awesome sport. For example, there is no reason for skaters before puberty to be segregated by gender. I mean, yeah, there's going to be more girls than boys. But isn't that how we've kind of socialized our girls and boys into being? So therefore we give boys an opportunity to win medal so that they'll continue in the sport. But then at the same time, when they're not on the ice, or maybe when they are on the ice, they get called slurs for skating. And this is regardless of discipline. There's no scientific evidence that any physical disparities based on gender are present until puberty. And while those disparities do show up later on, we built the sport based around those disparities, but not in a way that is meaningful to how people exist in 2022. We could just as easily provide more opportunities for people to get out of that dichotomy, to place more emphasis on the things that we do have in common, regardless of what gender we were assigned or what medicine we're taking. We've already figured out how to do the co-ed equity thing in the solo dance series. While you may test a certain series of steps, the series only recognizes one of those steps for the purposes of competing. My bone to pick it, with solo dance specifically is in the adult category. So you can compete co-ed, you compete against men and women in the same event based on level. But you're forced to skate your gender steps, your preferred gender, that is. Um, I mean, okay, so this is, this won't really be a thing in the future because they recently made a decision at Governing Council to change the man and lady step into leading and following steps. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that actually plays out in the real world because you can do that on paper, but in reality, I'm skeptical. But yeah, I'm not really going to get into that conversation right now. That is for another day. But the point still stands. Why didn't we follow the steps of the series for the sake of equity and competition? And why are we so lazy about making real change instead of just kind of doing bullcrap changes and making everything harder? Everything in the sport kind of feels like it's just hodgepodge together instead of looking at the whole friggin' document, the whole friggin' sport, and figuring out how is this fundamentally exclusionary? Pattern dance doesn't need to be gendered, and they figured that out because ballroom dance, 
from which it was inspired from already has same gender partner dancing where we're sorely lacking still in the competitive field. And while we have set up partner disciplines like pairs and dance to have a male base and a female lifted partner, it doesn't actually have to be that way. We could just change it. Like, we're just doing this because it's what's been done. But figure skating and its disciplines have changed so much over the years and we've adjusted the sport to accommodate that. By not accommodating this, we're leaving people out or forcing them to choose when the choice is arbitrary. My challenge to the figure skating community is to rethink the sport. We're allowing trans folks to compete once they've medically transitioned and we're making level harder to get because the field is advancing. Can we start making some real equitable change to the sport? Even if it's on a non-qualifying level? Make some co-ed events other than solo dance, synchro, and showcase and reevaluate the role that gender has in competition in the sport and may i just throw something in that can someone at u.s figure skating please please rethink the four test tracks for ice dance when you do the leading partnered follow partnered leading solo follow solo i don't think that is necessary it just doesn't it feels unnecessary because I feel like you just pigeonhole people arbitrarily and I think it's just going to make the back end of skating a lot harder and it might end up actually making it harder to meaningfully partner at the elite level but that's just my first interpretation of that and I'm looking forward to seeing how Ice Dance really reevaluates itself because that's probably one of the most problematic when it comes to gender normativity in the sport. In any case, I will be revisiting this topic later in the summer when I talk about more things that I have to interrogate in the sport of figure skating. But until then, can you please leave a comment down below giving me your input, your insight into gender and its role in figure skating? Are you more conservative? Do you think that we really should just stay with the man and the woman? Or do you think there should be some kind of change and reevaluation in how gender is presented in the sport and how it's honestly criticized? Please be respectful down there. I do look at every single comment that comes across my inbox and I'm not afraid to hit the delete button or the ban button. So no inflammatory nonsense, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.